hi guys welcome back to my channel it's wengil for those of you who are new welcome in this channel we try to talk about africa what's up africa what's new africa how beautiful is africa what's the issues with africa basically anything that has to do with motivation inspiration and everything that's good this segment is called what's up africa and we try and discuss what's been happening in africa lately the first news i'm reporting to you is buhari's daughter taking the presidential jet for her own private trips Hanan Buhari, the daughter of Nigerian President Buhari, flew to the northern state on the presidential jet. As soon as the picture surfaced online, Nigerians were outraged and that this is an abuse of power and accused the presidential family using taxpayers' money to fund private trips. A former chairman of the National Human Rights Commission, Chidi Odinkali, told a newspaper that, quote, for an administration that sold itself on ticket of integrity, these guys are acting entitled to the point of criminality. Rather than seek to justify it, they should simply apologize. Quote. You guys, the president's daughter took the presidential plane to take pictures. I kid you not. She took the plane to take pictures. She's a professional photographer, so she took the plane. How does that conversation go? She goes to her dad and says, Hi, Dad. I wanted to take a picture for Instagram, so can I take the jet? Sure, daughter. Take the plane. Just be back before dinner time. <laughs> Sorry. It's just so ridiculous. But in all seriousness, think of all the resources they're wasting. They're wasting the fuel. I'm sure the pilot is going to be paid. There are hostesses on board. All these things are going to cost the taxpayer of Nigeria. So, um, yeah, not cool, Buhari, and your daughter, not cool. Ethiopian journalist seeks asylum in UK. Bilal Warku was a senior journalist with EBC, which is Ethiopia's state broadcasting corporation. He worked there for nine years. Bilal accompanied Deputy Prime Minister Damak Amokonen to UK Africa Summit. He didn't return home after the summit seeking asylum, saying he had been threatened by high-ranking government officials. Bilal told BBC, quote, there is no way I can go back and live freely in Ethiopia. There is no press of freedom or editorial independence for that matter. Whenever I try to tell the truth through my work, I get threats. I can't say much as I fear for my family's safety. Really, Bilal? Really? This guy wants us to believe he's been working for EBC for nine years. A state-owned broadcasting corporation. Mind you, he has been a reporter seven years before Prime Minister Abiy took power. For those of you who are not aware, in Ethiopia, there was no freedom of speech. Let's say two years back, before Prime Minister Abiy took power. And nobody can say anything about the government without being harmed, without being jailed, or without mysteriously disappearing. So this guy has been a senior reporter for nine years at EBC and then now is when he's seeking asylum and going to the UK and claiming there's no freedom for reporters. Are you serious? This sounds a bit suspect to me because you see, it's after Prime Minister Abiy took power that media was free to talk about the government. Media was free to talk, to choose their topics and say something. Because when pri before Prime Minister Abiy, we all know, we Ethiopians know how it was and how we were afraid to even speak our minds, not even to the media, but to our relatives, to people that we don't know if they have connection. So now you're telling me after Prime Minister Abiy is when you're fearing for your life and your family's life. Are you kidding? Are you joking? Boy, bye. I don't know what the deal of this Bilal guy is. I will definitely investigate. I will definitely try and update you guys on what's going on if there's any new updates. But uh, sounds really ridiculous to me. And I find it hard to believe, to be honest. Boeing 737 MAX to be approved before mid-year of 2020. The Federal Aviation Administration, FAA, is trying to let the Boeing 737 MAX fly sooner than expected. This comes at a time when the FAA is still dealing with the fallout from its decision to certify the 737 MAX in the first place. The organization failed to thoroughly inspect the plane when they approved back in 2017, which caused two crashes already killing hundreds of passengers. I get it. They are losing billions. But still, human lives? billions to be honest with you for all i care they can go broke after that same model of plane took all those lives they're still fighting to get that plane approved for flying passengers this specific model killed 157 passengers 
just last year for those of you who are not aware the Boeing 737 MAX just last year 2019 killed 157 passengers traveling from Addis Ethiopia to Nairobi Kenya and Boeing don't think that we forgot that you tried to blame the pilot and the ET airline for your mistakes and then apologized after the examination and it was found out that it's your fault it's the company's fault it's the system malfunction that caused those passengers to die to lose their lives families lost loved ones there are you kidding now you're saying we have to chop chop make money at whatever cost now we're going to fly it and approve Aye. Just take your time, make sure you rectify the issues and the problems that caused your system to malfunction and now we can move forward. But until then, I really, really hope all those countries that banned Boeing will continue to not accept that specific model and fly other planes because come on guys, this is lives we're talking about. So I hope those countries don't reconsider and Boeing can take its time to actually fix the problems. Thank you guys for watching. As always, let's have a discussion down below in the comment section. Tell me what your thoughts are. I'll see you on the next one. Until then, stay blessed.